Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm going to do a reaction to the story of Shania Davis. I done seen this all over YouTube and I really haven't just sat down and um just sat down and paid attention to it. Um, because when I do come on here, I try to up do things to my channel. Um, but I do want to pay close attention to this story because I don't heard about it, but I haven't really know what happened. So if you guys want to, you guys can sit down and join me. Um, make sure you have all your breakfast snacks because it is well, girl, it's 12 o'clock. Okay, it's 12 o'clock. Um so have your lunch snacks, okay? But uh, if you guys noticed, my last video cut off because I I stayed on that video for an hour, you guys. I'm not doing it this time. <laughs> I'm going to try to cut these videos short. I want to find 30-minute videos and below because these hours and, and videos, I can't do them um, unless I do part one, part two. And I really don't want to do part one, part two. But if it come push to shove, then I have to. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. Hit the notification bell, of course, because you guys know I am on the road to a certain number by the end of the year. And we need to get there, okay? And, um, of course, we got no karma, so sh you guys must come in. Let me know you are here. Do not watch my video and be silent. Just let me know what you think about this video and let's get into it, okay? So let me minimize myself, maximize this video. And then, of course, y'all should go get Kachava, even though it's expensive as heck, okay? So let's go ahead and mute that, play that. And, of course, let's undo this With over 70 and skip that. Let's go. I woke up this morning and my daughter was not in the house. I don't know if she walked out. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but she's not here. How old is your daughter? She's five. Five? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what time did you wake up? I saw her. Uh, at 5.30 last night. 5.30 last night. Is that when you put her to bed? Yes, ma'am. No, when she went back to bed. Okay. Uh, that was 5 this morning. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, were there any doors open or anything like that? She know how to unlock the front door. Okay. What is her name? Tonight, As humans, we all have our fair share of mistakes. It's yeah, but would she have? But which it's five thirty in the morning, and you put her back to sleep. Would she go in there and sneak and unlock the door and go outside? That's the question. It's inevitable. It will happen. Some of us have things that we wish we could go back in time and change, but. The truth is that once a mistake is created, you can only either move forward and learn from the mistake, or you can choose to repeat it. But we as society seem to repeat the same mistakes over and over. Right. This next story that I'm bringing to you is coming out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I truly believe that if it weren't for this one fatal mistake, then the outcome might have been totally different. This is a story about how mistake after mistake would alter the lives of many. This is the story of Shania Davis, or who others know as Angel. Mm -hmm. June 14, 2004. Oh. The world would make way for Shania Davis. Shania Davis was described as very friendly. Her father says that she was well reserved. She was shy in the beginning, but if she warmed up to you and got to know you, she would eventually get on your nerves, just the amount of attention that she would show you. She also, mm -hmm. at her age, seemed to have a good understanding of worth ethic. She was a busy bumblebee. Whenever someone was, say, cleaning the house, she had to be right there helping them. She was also a little diva in the making. She enjoyed the girly things, such as playing dress up, fixing hair, playing with Barbie dolls, just anything that a normal child her age would do, that's what she did. 
She was brought into this world by Bradley Lockhart and Antoinette. Aww. Now, by the year 2009, Shania would be five years old. She would be attending Morganson Road Elementary School. The teachers there loved her. She was eager to learn. The students loved her as well. As I said, she was a real friendly person, so making conversation with a stranger was a little rough at first, but once she got to know him, she was all over them. That's just how she was. Shania would be predominantly raised by her father. Her mother was never really in her life. And in a minute, you're going to find out that it probably should have stayed that way. Now, yeah. Shania's life was great. Life at home with her dad was lovely, but her mom, on the other hand, was going through a lot of issues. She had past drug use, past problems, and <laughs> at the year of 2009, I guess Bradley felt like she was trying to change for the better. She had got him a place to live, so mm -hmm. Bradley decided that maybe it'd be a good thing if he let Shania be inside of her life. So Bradley sent Shania to live with Antoinette. So at this point, Shania is essentially between her father's house and her mother's house. She would go visit her father, but her father was remarried. He had a wife. And she would testify that sometimes it seems that Shania had marks on her. She wow. felt that she was being abused. She said that on a few occasions she saw... Let me tell you this. Soon as I seen the marks when she came back to my house, She'll never go back to her mom's house, period. No questions, no. If you want to see my child, I'm going to be right there. When I leave, my baby leaving with me, period. A cigarette burns in her skin, but regardless of those situations, Shania continued to go to her mother's house. Mm. The back and forth visits will continue until November 10th of 2009. <laughs> That's when those visits will come to a screeching halt. Because Shania would vanish. Wow. And at 6.52 in the morning, her mother would place a call to 911, informing them that her daughter was missing and she can't find her. 911, what's your emergency? Yes, ma'am. My name is Antoinette Davis. I had a legacy. Hey, excuse me. Hold on. Ma'am. My name is Antoinette Davis. It's 1116. Stop crying so much. It's, you, you over faking it. You better open up your mouth so these people can hear you. While you up there trying to fake cry and can't nobody to hear you. I don't fucking smile. Okay, I'm not getting your address clearly. Can you slow down a little bit and tell me again? That's what I'm saying. 1116 A. 1116 A. 1116 Yes. Okay, ma'am. How can I help you? I woke up this morning and my daughter was not in the house. I don't know if she walked out. Baby, you skipping um you skipping questions. She asked you when did you wake up? Five thirty last night. Is that when you put her to bed? Yes, ma'am. No, when she went back to bed. Sure, ma'am. She came to bed. Uh, that was five this morning. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, were there any doors open or anything like that? She know how to unlock the front door. Yeah. Okay. What is her name? Uh, juvenile's inside the home? It's my son, but he's here. Okay. 
and your door was not unlocked. That's what you're telling me. No, it was not unlocked. But I'm telling you, she knows how to unlock it. I'm hoping that she didn't unlock it and walk out. Okay. Joining us exclusively from Fayetteville is Shania's father, Bradley Lockhart, and his sister, Carrie Lockhart Davis. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Bradley, let me begin with you. What are police telling you this morning about the latest? Hold on, you guys. Yes, this is the ghetto reaction. Uh -huh. I'm coming. One minute. Here I am. Eyes back, people. Reaction. Um, they're keeping me informed, however, they're not providing a lot of information. I do understand it's in the best interest of the case in finding my daughter and bringing her home safely. Are you feeling hopeful this morning? I've been feeling hopeful every day. I that someone out there would uh, do the right thing and take my daughter somewhere to a hospital, police station, just anywhere safe, drop her off at Walmart anyway, I don't care. Um, just so somebody can find her and bring her back to the people that love her. So Shania is missing. Her mother has no idea where she's at. So the police would issue an Amber Alert and they would immediately begin the search for Shania. Now, at this point, all they know is that she's missing and they have nothing to go on. But that Amber Alert would bring some good news. They would get a call from someone who worked at a hotel, a female employee, who says that she believes she saw Shania there the day before. She says that a younger gentleman came in with the female around the age of the person who was missing in the Amber Alert. She says that this guy rented a hotel room, said that he was on the way to drop her off with her mother, so he just needed to rest because he was driving a long way. Well, not only was that Shania, but they were able to capture surveillance camera of him carrying Shania through the hallway. So with this newfound information, the authorities would work quickly to find out who this guy is. But it doesn't take long because when you stay at hotels, you have to present an ID. So essentially, we'll figure out who this is very quickly. So they find out that this guy's name is Mario McNeil. Now, Mario is no stranger to the family. Mario used to date Antoinette's sister. So now they're just trying to figure out what is he doing with her. Now, Mario would be tracked down by the police. They find him. They interrogate him. Mario McNeil says he's innocent. He says that he took her to that hotel. However, he did drop her off and he doesn't know where she's at present. So Mario is basically saying that he's innocent. He doesn't know where she's at. So all the police can do is now go back to Antoinette Davis and try to get her side of the story. Now, seeing that he did used to date her sister, it makes it very funny circumstances that the mother called her in missing, but yet she's with someone that the family knows. So hmm. they start to interrogate Davis, and it doesn't take long for Davis to break. Now, this begins because Davis, although she did have a job, did have a stable household now, she was still using and she had even racked up a lot of debt, taking drugs on consignment. And who did she owe this money? None other than Mario McNeil. Now, so uh, this Mario McNeil guy, if she owed him money, who do you think she giving that baby to? Is she gonna give it to him? And plus, he used to date her sister. So if her sister not home, you owe me money. I'm going to take something that you love the most. Either he took that baby because she owed him or he took that baby because she gave the baby to him. Now, Mario McNeil didn't initially come over there to just try and get his money. You see, he had been smoking, doing the little drugs that night. Yeah. He was just going through his phone, hitting up females, trying to see if anyone was available to hang out. He had even tried to contact Antoinette's sister, just trying to come over, maybe chill a little bit. Well, she's not picking up the phone. So what he does is he decides to go over there. And when he goes over there, he sees Antoinette. 
He then tells Antoinette that he wants to see her sister, Brenda. He wants to hang out with her. But Antoinette tells him that no, her sister is asleep. He can't see her. So what does he do then? He decides, well, since I can't see her, how about that money you owe me? You can run that to me right now. But she doesn't have the money. He gets upset. Now he's angry that he can't see the sister. He's belligerent. He's high. And now the only thing on his mind is his money. So since she can't pay him, he says, either you give me the money or you can spread your legs and we'll call it even. Well, Antoinette decides to take the negative option. Only she doesn't fulfill this obligation herself. She decides no. to have Mario, her five-year-old daughter, and agrees to let Mario take her daughter to a hotel. So now nice that she's admitted this, she goes to jail. So now her and Mario are both in jail. With his newfound information, Mario is interrogated again. He maintains that he's innocent. He has nothing to do with anything. He once again says that, yes, I was with her, but I dropped her off. Wherever she's at now, I don't know. Now, since the first interview, Mario has now tried to electrocute himself twice while he was in jail. Yes, tried to Damn. take himself out. So those are telling signs that something might not be right here. Nah, what it is, he killed that baby. Now his conscience is eating away at him. So the only thing he can do is kill himself to get relief. I'm pretty sure you raped this five-year-old girl. Because you owe me money. I'm going to hurt you where I know it's going to hurt. So he probably took this girl, did something to her. And yeah, now his conscience is eating away at him. So what you think he's going to do? He can't live with that for the rest of his life. Plus, he know at this point, he finna go to jail. And you know, in prison, you mess with a child and a woman, it's over for you. It's over and no comeback. Something sinister might be lurking beneath these stores. So, Shania is still missing. Her mother's in jail. Her father is going out of his mind. He can't find his daughter, but you're about to find out that this isn't the first time that Bradley has went through something like this. Eleven years prior to Shania disappearing, his ex-wife would be murdered. Her name mm. was Vicky Sue Lockhart. And on March 3rd of 1998, she would be back home visiting with her family. That is when intruders would enter the home. Inside this home were five adults. All five adults would be bound and gagged. Mm. And then once the robbery was completed, they would all be shot multiple times. Vicki Sue Lockhart and her sister Chanel Coleman, as well as another man named David Lee Epps, would all perish in this tragedy. So That's now crazy. you understand that Bradley Lockhart has been through this before. In fact, six years after losing his wife is when Shania would enter this world. And she would make life just a little bit easier. She would make the healing process just a little bit faster. And now his little beacon of light is missing. I miss you. I love her very much. Contact the police department. Anybody who has any information. Whoever has children out there knows how much your child means to them. Allow them to bring her home safely to us. Shania, if you're listening to Daddy, I miss you so much, honey, and I'm waiting for you. I'm not going to give up, and you don't give up either, honey. Mm. The laws of our pet ship have changed many times, and if you wait, it's much issues. harder. I just don't get it. At this point, we now have Antoinette in jail, and she's giving the authorities the real story. So they approach Mario and let him know, you know, basically it's up. She told us everything, so where is she? So this is when Mario decides to tell the police what really happened. Only he doesn't really ever admit to anything. The only thing he ever admits to is where he left the body. He would mm. disclose where he think he left her, although he does say he didn't know the exact location. So 
his lawyers get in contact with the authorities, let them know this information, you know, but this is all just a charade, you know, it's to pretend like you're showing transparency, you know, like you're remorseful, like you really care. It's just the lawyer's way of trying to save you because at this point, the only thing he can do is try and save you from the death penalty. So they searched the area that he provided for them and they did in fact find Shania. Let me tell you guys something, then I'm going to let it go ahead and play out. I would never, t if I was a lawyer, I don't care how much they want to pay, I would never be on the side of a person who killed a child. I will always be on the side where I'm finna send this person who killed this child to jail. I would never try to defend them. I'm, I'm, that's just me as a lawyer. And plus, when I become a lawyer, I will make that known. I would never want to take a case dealing with someone who killed a child. And plus, I know for a fact you did it. It would never, no, not a, can't do it, won't do it. Good evening, everyone. I'm just news broke this story just after 1 o'clock, and new details continue to come in at this hour. Chopper 11 HD remains live over the scene off Walker Road and Highway 87 on the Lee Harnett County line. Authorities do remain on the scene tonight. We begin our coverage in the breaking news center live with DKL Steve. Francis and Tisha's search teams made up of volunteers and law enforcement officers spent a second day searching near the Lee Harnett County line, and by about 1 o'clock this afternoon, they found the body of Shania Davis. Chopper 11 HD is flying over wow. the scene. It's about a quarter mile from Highway 87 southeast of Sanford. Fayetteville police are in charge of the investigation, and right now they're waiting for the FBI to arrive to help exhume the body. You can see they have lights out there, and they could be working there well into the night. The motive behind the murder of Shania Davis is unknown, though we can speculate that he did violate her, and it was probably to keep her quiet. I'm pretty sure she put up quite a big fight. The coroner would conclude in the autopsy that she was violated and she was smothered. So how it happened, he's never told how. I don't know if he ever will. That's why he killed but, you. You know, he that's a real him. heinous act. It's sickening. It's sad. Uh, it makes you question humanity as a whole, you know, where are we going these days? Which brings me right back to the beginning of this video when I was talking about empathy. What a powerful thing empathy is. The ability to empathize with others, to truly feel how others are feeling. That is something that we as humans all possess. Just some choose to suppress it. And sometimes the lack of empathy causes us to do things that may cause a fatal mistake. Now, I say this to say this, I'm in no way, shape, or form trying to blame the authorities for her death. However, a couple of weeks before Shania went missing, Antoinette's house was raided by the authorities. You know, this was a drug raid, but during this raid, they didn't follow protocol. They were to notify child protection services that they did, in fact, raid that house for drugs and there were children present, but the authorities did not do this. If it weren't for this one mistake, Shania might still be here because proper procedure would have been for them to open a case on the family. They would have seen, you know, the habitat that she was living in with her mother, and they would have immediately sent Shania to live back with her father right. in a safe and clean environment. But due to this one mistake by the authorities by not reporting what the facts were, she ended up losing her life, and I feel like that this was easily preventable. It yes, was. That monster Mario deserves every bit and every negative comment that comes his way. He is the reason why this happened, as well as Antoinette. But I can't stop thinking about how if they had just followed protocol and, uh, you know, reported that it wasn't a safe environment for her. She would have been taken out immediately and she would probably still be here today. Right. For Antoinette's role in this, she would receive a whopping 17 years at a minimum and is currently due to be released out of prison in May of 2027. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's just as liable. I feel like she should be in there for the rest of her life. But right. you know, that's the choice that the jury made. 
and the judge overall decided that that was the appropriate reaction so can't do anything but move on from that now as far as mario due to the nature of the crime the prosecutors would in fact choose to seek the death penalty so mario mcneil would have his day in court where he would stand in front of the judge in front of the family in front of the entire world and his fate would be decided Madam Clerk, please uh, take the verdict. Madam Clerk, the jury has returned as its verdict as to the issues and recommendation as to punishment as to the defendant, Mario McNeil, in file number 09-CRS-66040. As to issue number one, yes. As to issue number two, yes. As to issue number three, yes. As to issue number four, yes. The jury has returned as its recommendation as to the defendant, Mario McNeil, that he be sentenced to death. It's this unanimous recommendation of the jury. So say you all by raising your hand. The court sees 12 hands. Thank you, have seen. Defense may have seen. Mario McNeil would attempt to have his death sentence overthrown. However, the Supreme Court denied to move forward with this motion, and his death sentence was upheld. And one day, those officers are going to walk down that hallway. They're going to open his cell. They're going to place him in cuffs. And then they're going to lead him to a little room, about the same size room as a normal hotel room, like the one he took Shania to. Then he'll be placed on a bed. He'll be strapped down, unable to move unable to fight back like Shania was when he guiltlessly took her life and then they're gonna take that syringe and place it inside of you you're gonna jerk you're gonna shake you're gonna fight back with everything that you have just as I'm sure that Shania did before she left this earth but just like she couldn't make it through you won't make it through either and the last thing that you will remember when you close your eyes will be that beautiful little angel's face. I can guarantee that. Rest in peace, Shania Davis. Thank you for being a light for others. Man, let me tell you something. You never in your life think that you're going to get out of it. Uh, they're going to let you off easy, especially when it comes to a child. Now, I will say he did get everything he deserved, but I do feel like, honestly, and I might get like a, a lot of backlash from this. I honestly feel like the mom should have got more time. I honestly feel like that. 17 years is not enough. To me, it's not. You getting out in, what, 27? That's not enough because you gave her to him. I feel like y'all should got the same amount of time. Um, I also feel like, and I always felt like, um, the system doesn't do enough. Like, I feel like if the, if the DEA or whoever that went in and raided the house with drugs, they didn't do everything they were supposed to do. Because, honestly, if they did everything they were supposed to do, they wouldn't have any more kids in their house. Um, the people, the if it was any more, like, if it was her and her sister had kids, all of those kids would be taken away or given to a, 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 a respectable, a honest parent. It was, the, the baby wouldn't have stayed in the house, honestly. Let's be real. But, anyways, this is just how I feel on that video. Um, and let me know what you guys think about this video. It did happen February, well, this video was published February the 14th, and I just, I mean, I just decided to speak on it. Um, but I do want to, like, it's, it's, it's a lot going on with this, um, with this case. Um, it's a good thing they did let us know what happened during this case. And I do want to let you guys know, I am doing more stories of a certain person. So, uh, y'all just stay tuned for the rest of them, okay? And, um...
Yeah, let's we on the road, okay? We on the road, we trucking, we almost there, we trucking. Thank you guys for joining my channel. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. And yeah, um, with God lead, that's enough noise. Bye, you guys.